Hello, hi. Welcome to episode number 17 of an Italian knitting podcast. My name is Francesca. I'm an Italian knitter. Today is unfortunately a very gloomy day here in the northeast of Italy, which is where I also work from home as a software engineer and I live with my husband, our daughter and our cat. I feel like as knitters, we should technically be happy about the cold weather outside because then we can get to wear all the knits and cozy objects that we produced with our hands. However, I hate it. I'm not like a cold weather person. So yeah, I'm not loving this situation and I'm looking forward to days getting longer and longer and warmth and spring coming around. Either way, I hope you're doing well and you're ready to join me on this episode. If you're new here, you might be actually coming from Inga from the Knitting Traditions podcast. She showed a big plotolopi shawl that I sent her. I don't know if you're interested in the story, but like I made this plotolopi shawl a few years ago. It was a, a good experience, a good knitting experience. Plotolopi is an unspun yarn. It feels like roving almost, and it's very easy to pull apart. So with just your fingers, you can split the strand of yarn in two parts. And the shawl that I made is a gradient shawl. That's the Aito shawl by Melody Hoffman by Mandarins. And I think the design is lovely and the Plotolopi is the perfect yarn for it. Because for the shawl, you need to achieve a gradient look. And what you can do is knit with your first collar and then just join very easily, rubbing your hand a little bit of collar B, so the following collar. And then after that, you join a little bit of the first collar and so on. So you create your own kind of long strand of alternating collars. And when you knit it up, it'll just create a gradient automatically for you, right? And you have no ends to weave in. So I think it's a very smart combo between the yarn and the pattern. However, I hated wearing the shawl with all my heart. I wore it, like I think for five minutes once uh, by having maybe like a high neck something, like a high neck shirt underneath and having the shawl on top but I felt still kind of the prickliness of the Plotolopi fiber. It's a very rustic fiber so I, I now know that that's not for me. I'm all about like the soft mohairs and the soft wool and the not very rustic fibers. And so that shawl was like folded and lived for many many years in the depth of my closet. And I watch Inga Knitting Traditions quite religiously. And I think at some point she mentioned either wanting a Plotolopi shawl or maybe I just assumed that she really would enjoy the shawl based on the fact that she wears more rustic garments or accessories than me. And so I was like, hi, on Instagram, would you be interested in giving some love to my shawl that has been in the closet for forever and I don't know who I should gift it to because people in real life that I know, none of them would enjoy this. And she was like, yes, that she would be happy to take it on as part of her knitted family. And so my shawl went on a little journey to Norway and that's how it got in her hands. And I think she appreciates it so much and 100% like way much more than I ever did or I would ever do. And so I, I'm so happy that this is like a happy ending story. I don't know, it makes me so happy when I think about it. I will, I think, keep my eyes open for either yarn or projects that I made and or that I own that could make someone else happier that how much they make me happy. Either way, this was the parenthesis. Sorry, it was a long one, but if you're coming from her channel, thank you for stopping by. Cool. Today I have one finished object, a good amount of works in progress, and a good amount of acquisitions as well. 
One is actually, sorry, I'm looking around so much, but one is actually something that it's quite outside of my usual buying zone. <laughs> so I'll show you afterwards. Let's go, babies. Hello. Uh, first and only finished object is this massive blanket slash wrap. I should say it's a wrap. That's the technical term. It is the half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho, knitted up in Pearl Soho yarn. So I followed the directions and the recommendations and I used Linen Quill by Pearl Soho. This is reed gray and this is turmeric yellow. This is a giant wrap. It is mostly a square. I mean, it's not exactly a square, like at the centimeter, but like approximately a square. And it's composed by two triangles. You can wear it with one color in the like forefront or the other one as you wish, or you can kind of mix and match, I think. I never do it actually, but let me try. It would be something like this. I don't know if I love it though. I don't have a very clear view of myself right now of what you are seeing but i don't know and you can also of course use it as a blanket which is i think what i've used it for the most part and that's because i don't leave my house as much and so i've been enjoying this as a blanket mostly on the sofa or even here at my desk where i work um, at my computer and this serves as like a little pop of color to brighten up these gloomy days. So very versatile, quite light. This is fingering weight yarn. And the thing that I don't love is that I have quite a lot of leftovers. So I chose the biggest size. There are two sizes in the pattern. I chose the biggest one and it calls for three skeins of each color. And so I followed that recommendation. I didn't stray away from the paved path. I bought three of each, but I have a good amount left. So this is, let's say like 75% of one skein. So if it is 75 grams and same for this. So this is a lot of leftovers. I don't know what I will make with this. I could make like a teeny tiny version of this blanket and I don't know, gift it to my daughter maybe, I don't know. This would be quite cute to kind of replicate the same pattern, but it at a smaller scale. I don't know if that's very useful. If you have ideas of what to knit with these leftovers, let me know. And I did enjoy knitting with Linen Quill. It is a quite a, like a lovely yarn. However, I don't know how to say this, but I don't understand all the hype, I think. Like I know this is very, very well loved by many, many people. And one of those people is actually Stacy who is the designer behind Stress Knits Yarns and she loves it. She loves this base. She has it in many, many different colors and I do love it as well, but I don't know. I guess she lives in the United States, so it's quite, I guess, easy to get a hold of the yarns. You just order from Pearl Soho and you're good to go. However, if you're outside the United States, it's not as easy to get a hold of because you need to pay shipping and customs probably. So I think you can do without it. Like if you've been eyeing this yarn and you really want to try, but you are not willing to pay for shipping and customs and things like that, I think you'll be good. No worries. You can knit the half and half with other fingering weight yarns. And I think it'll look lovely as a finished piece. I'm actually fairly lucky because either me or my husband visit the United States quite frequently throughout the year and so I can get this yarn if I want to without having to get it shipped to Italy, which is where I live. But yeah, I don't know. This was just a random thought in my mind. Looking forward to knit another one this year, maybe next winter. I think you would love having this project on the needle if you love garter stitch. So knit, 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 knit forever and ever. If you need a project to work on either on the sofa while watching a movie, 
or if you're watching something that you need to kind of pay a little attention to or if you're watching the person like a, a human being like a toddler like I usually am or maybe if you want to kind of have it as a project that gives you a break from more convoluted and complicated patterns like you're knitting on a complicated sweater, cable, the lace, whatever, and you want to switch it up maybe during the day to have your brain take a break a little bit. It goes by a little bit slowly. So I would not recommend, honestly, to have this as the only project on your needles. Like if you're a monogamous knitter, first of all, how do you do that? Like I would not survive with one project at the time. I would be so bored. However, if you are a monogamous knitter and you're thinking about this as your only project, it might be a little bit too boring, honestly. Not sure, like you do you, of course. I think what helped me is that I actually had this project as my only project for the first week. So I cast it on and for that first week, it was the only project on my needles because I was away for work and I didn't bring lots of different projects to choose from. I only brought this one. Uh, I cast it out on my flight actually. And so for that first week while I was abroad, I needed only on this. And so what happened is that I made very big progress because just knitting on it, no distractions in terms of other knits. And I was able to see the progress. And then from then on, I just worked on it whenever I felt like. I would expect that if you kind of cast it on, and not do like intensive progress at the beginning, you might get quite discouraged actually because it does grow slowly, especially at the beginning. What you do is you start from the bottom here. I chose the gray as my first color, so I kind of cast it on at the bottom. Sorry, this way. <laughs> I cast it on here at the bottom. And so you cast on a lot of stitches. And then after that, you do short rows so that the shawl, the, the rows that you do actually decrease in number of stitches. So you start with the maximum amount of stitches that you'll have on your needles. And then row after row, you shorten the rows using the short row technique. After a little while, um, you're done with your first collar and your rows get very, very short, which is very satisfying, but also means that at the beginning, they go very, very slowly. So I feel like if you get over the initial effort of having lots of stitches on the needles, you're good. And in terms of short row technique, the pattern calls for the wrap and turns. I chose to replace them with German short rows because I because I am just more familiar with German short rows. Uh, my fingers, like my hands, can do that technique slightly faster and more mindlessly. Probably because a lot of the patterns that I worked in the past, especially sweaters, called for German short rows um, at the back here to raise the back. And so I, I'm just more familiar with German short rows and it was just an easier way for me to knit this shawl. And I leave the tutorials down below that I followed, especially one that explains how to substitute German short rows instead of the wrap and turns that are in the official pattern. But yeah, I really like it. I really like the finished project. I think this for me was both a process knit and a product knit. So I really enjoy the process, very mindless garter stitch, a little bit of paying attention during the short rows, but nothing mind blowing. And I also truly enjoy the finished piece. Versatile, wear it as a blanket, as a shawl, whatever you'd like. I think it's also very fun to choose the colors because as you can see there are two. There's actually now a version of this shawl that has stripes. And so I think you could then use scraps from your stash to knit that. You would have to have a lot of scraps probably. I didn't do the math, but maybe you could buy just like a couple of skeins and then combine them with something from your stash and make it into like a stripey version. You could do a color block version. 
I mean, it's very versatile, I think, as a pattern. And it's free as well, which is lovely. I don't think I have anything else to say about this other than when I cast it off, I was slightly sad because I didn't have anything else gutter stitchy in my whip pile. And so after I was done with that, I cast it on another gutter stitch project, which leads us into my first work in progress. Boom. <laughs> How bright is this color? So this is the most simple garter stitch blanket that you'll ever see in your life. It is just garter stitch back and forth. The only, only, only modification, no modification, the only fancy thing I'm doing is I'm slipping the last stitch of each row so that I don't get the garter bumps at the edge here and just a little bit of a sleeker edge, sleek is not the right word probably, but like a smoother edge instead of the garter bumps that you would see if I didn't do anything at the end of the row. I mean, in the camera, in the screen, I think it looks much brighter than in person. In person, it's still very, very bright, but not as much. And what happened here with this color is that I'm usually gifted some yarn from my mom's cousin. I think what happened is that she, my mom's cousin, got a hold of a good amount of yarn from a friend who had a store and I think the store closed or something similar and so my mom's cousin has a good amount of yarn and I don't think she is interested as much anymore in crafting, uh, like crocheting or knitting and so I think she just is sometimes getting rid of some of her yarn and I am the recipient of said yarn and I'm very happy about it. This time around, the color is not exactly matching my general taste. I usually go for more like muted shades, pastel -y, or neutrals, blues, greens, not bright reds. However, I couldn't pass really the opportunity to have a new project that's very relaxing, that's garter stitch, and that I can do in the dark in my daughter's bedroom while she's falling asleep, or that I can do it on the sofa while watching a TV show or a movie. And so I went for it. The yarn is, I think, Italian. It's Silke Wikico. I don't know. Maybe if you're Italian, you've seen this label before. It is 50% wool and 50% acrylic. I didn't want to use it for a garment because I do not like the feel of acrylic on my body. And I wasn't sure that my mom or a friend would love this bright red as a garment. So I went for a blanket. And I'm not sure if I will keep this one. I'll see how the finished piece will look like. I'm thinking I can also gift it to my mom. She has a lot of oranges in her house. I don't know if you could qualify this as in like a in the orange family, color family. Probably not. This is more like a red, but I don't know. I'll see how it looks and see if she would enjoy this or not. I'm mostly just using this as a process knit. So just for the pleasure of sitting down and letting my hands go for it, enjoying the process of every knit stitch, thinking about things, thinking about work, but also maybe thinking about the future and the TV show I'm watching or yeah. So I don't think it will be like a product knit, like I probably will not like love this finished piece as much. However, I don't know, the process is lovely. What I'm doing is I did a stripe here in this in person is more of a like brownish red or reddish brown, I don't know. And I'll do another stripe here. So we're not yet halfway through. We still have a little bit to go. So this current bright red stripe will grow more. I'll do another stripe of the brownish red, reddish brown. And then again, finishing up with the bright red. And I had 10 bowls of the bright red and two bowls of the reddish brown. 
So in total would be 12 bowls, 12 50 grams bowls of this. I think it's a sport weight. Good, I don't know. I think blankets are a good way to use acrylic. I mean, I'm not seeing anything mind blowing or groundbreaking, I think. Uh, but yeah, if you have acrylic yarn in your stash, blanket, gift it or keep it. Next up, a sip of tea. But seriously, next up, a test knit. This is my first test knit of 2023. I've said this before, but I truly love test knitting and I was happy to get started with my first test knit of 2023. This is nothing so far. <laughs> it looks like nothing and it's not a lot of progress yet. However, it'll be a lovely moonlight cardigan by Minimi Knit Design. Her name is Cristina. She actually lives in Italy, which I found so exciting. I think I've seen the test knitters wanted post on Instagram. And then I also noticed that she was posting from Florence and I was like, Ooh, it seems like a match made in heaven. I don't know. I like to be connected with Italian knitting community somehow. So I don't know. I jumped at the chance. And so, yeah, this is what I'm test knitting. Sorry for the needles clicking. So, I mean, this is what I have so far, more or less. This is a garter stitch cardigan with no sleeves and it's an open cardigan. It has a um, rolling stockinette stitch border here, collar. And here is all garter stitch, but this collar, collar here is in stockinette stitch. At the beginning, I wasn't sure that a sleeveless cardigan knitted with wool would make a lot of sense because I feel like when you want to wear wool and be warm, you also want sleeves. But the designer also said that she will work on the instructions to add sleeves to this existing pattern. And so if I ever want to add sleeves, I should be able to. I'll reach out to her and see if she would like me to test the sleeves as well. Um, but yeah, I think like having the option to either wear this as it will look like as soon as I'm done with the test knit or having also the chance to have sleeves, it made me very happy. The color I chose, I think it's lovely. I make great color choices other than the bright red blanket. What I chose to knit this with is drops. I filmed recently my everything I knit in 2022 type of roundup video and a lot of my garments are with drops yarn, especially at the beginning of the year where I wanted to go with a brand that I knew and that I liked without like trying new stuff all the time. And so I feel like filming that video inspired me to get back to some drops, which I really love. I'm doing a combination of Drops Flora, which is the fingering wool, 100% wool. Is it true? It's absolutely not true. This is 65% wool and 35% alpaca. Feels very lovely. And combining this with Drops Kid Silk. I will put the color names on the screen but I think they match it very well. They don't have the same color name. So if you look up the actual name of the two colors, they are not called exactly the same, but I feel like they work very well together. Maybe the flora is a little bit more of a green green and the kit silk is more of a bluish green. And I know many people actually don't love the feel of drops kit silk either like working with it or having it on their necks or their bare skin in general. However, I have zero problems with it. I really like it. It's, I think to me it feels soft. I don't know if it's maybe like each colorway has a slightly different texture and a different feeling maybe, or maybe my skin is simply not very sensitive. I don't know. As you know, I cannot wear a plotulopi though, so I cannot deal with maximum amount of rustiness or prickliness, but I feel like this kit silk is, it's very good. I actually put on 
uh, garment that I made with this exact combination in a different color, as you're seeing, but it is Drops Kit Silk and Drops Flora, and it's a no frills sweater. And I put it on so that I could give you a testimony that it actually is, 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 is I don't know, it's very soft to me. I mean, uh, maybe I would not do a cowl or a scarf, maybe. I think in, actually I would, but I would understand people not wanting to make a cowl with this because maybe if you're sweating a little bit, then your maybe neck gets more sensitive to being closer to the mohair. But like for a sweater or a cardigan, I love this. It's very affordable and it makes it kind of easy to pick it up. Yeah, and the test knit for me is super, super fun. I love the idea of having a garter stitch cardigan because cardigans typically are knitted in stockinette stitch, but it also means a row of knitting and a row of purling. And I do not like to purl. <laughs> I like to knit as in like performing the knit stitch. <laughs> and so this project allows me to get a finished cardigan which i truly desperately need in my wardrobe but it allows me to do mostly knit stitches the only purling is in the collar because on the wrong side it is purling so that you maintain the appearance of the stockinette stitch collar but i can deal with just few purl stitches it is a very fun construction because you knit a panel and then you pick up stitches here and then do some of this and then you pick up stitches and then continue. So it's never boring. I, I don't love picking up stitches, honestly, but I do love when a garment is knitted in more of like a interesting way so that it never gets boring. And to pick up stitches, actually, what I usually do, I don't know if it's helpful for someone, but sometimes pattern will tell you, you need to pick up this amount of stitches here in this, I don't know, piece or maybe around the collar. And sometimes they actually even tell you, you need to pick up three stitches every four. So in the piece of fabric, you will have, I don't know, four stitches and you need to pick up only three. And to me, it's sometimes, AKA most times confusing because for example, for this fabric, it's quite a dark one. So it's, a little bit difficult to see the stitches or maybe sometimes I'm just lazy and don't want to pay super super close attention to the edge of my fabric and so my main advice and the thing that I do for myself is I'll take whatever piece of fabric you need to pick up stitches on and I place stitch markers to divide this up in sections so I place usually one at the beginning and one at the end and I'll then do, okay, I'll fold it in half and here I'll place another stitch marker. And then this piece, I'll fold it in half and place another stitch marker and so on. And then in this way, I'll divide this up in smaller sections. And then I'll just do the math in terms of how many stitches do I need to pick up in that section. So for example, if this would be 80 stitches to pick up, and I manage to divide in eight sections, then you just know that each section will have 10 stitches and that's it. So you can just kind of fudge it because you'll just pick up 10 stitches. You don't have to be super precise, just pick up 10 in there and you're good. Okay, I don't know if that was clear, but I wanted to bring it up because I did this here, but I also did it in another work in progress that I have to show you. And we can actually move towards that work in progress because I don't think I have anything else to tell you about this other than I'm excited to continue working on it and see how it looks like. <laughs> One thing actually is that I started finally using these barber cords that people have been talking about in the knitting community and these are just like plastic tubes that you can put on your needle tip and then you slide all the live stitches onto these cables and then you can remove your needles and use them in a different part of the project, which is why it's happening here. And it's brilliant, lovely. However, my daughter had some <laughs> plastic tubes laying around and I think we got these ones either in a magazine, like in the kids magazine that had like a little plastic I don't know, gift. And honestly, these are exactly the same thing. So 
But like if you look at the section, it's exactly the same. It's not that one of the two is bigger or smaller, it's exactly the same. This is a plastic tube. So, so if you see these plastic tubes around and they're not like in the knitting section or in a yarn store, I mean, you can use these ones. I think these are meant to make bracelets with, like you can knot them and make like friendship bracelets with them, which I mean, I'm looking forward to when my daughter is an age when we can do crafty stuff together, but that's a different story. But yeah, I mean, they might not be super, super long. I feel like some of the ones that are like made for knitting are a little bit longer and so you can get a get away with, I don't know, using them for longer section, but I mean, these are, I think, long enough to maybe put armhole stitches on for a raglan sweater, for example, so I don't know, you can use these ones, they're exactly the same, and they are cheaper. Lovely color, lovely fabric, I'm excited to finishing up the test knit. I have another two works in progress. One has seen exactly zero progress, so this is a work in waiting. <laughs> this one has seen a little bit of progress, but not much. What this is, is a Stockholm sweater by Petit Knit. It has a folded collar, which I have not sewn down yet. What a mess. I put stitch markers to keep the collar folded down so that I can go and sew it down, but I haven't done it. I do have a sleeve on hold. The body is going along. This is just knit knit in the round, which I love. The other sleeve is still waiting for my love. This is another example of what I was mentioning before, of placing stitch markers to divide some section in different parts. So I put stitch markers and so I have different sections here. I have eight sections and then I did the math. Just I used the entire number of stitches and divided by eight and then that's the amount of stitches that I need to pick up in each section. That works much better for me and gives me a final number of picked up stitches that it's either perfect or very, very close to what I'm trying to achieve. And I'm using Filcolana Arveta and Filcolana Tilia. Finger and wool mohair, which is again, as you can tell, from what I've shown so far, probably, it's my, one of my favorite combinations. And the colorway is light truffle. The other work in progress has actually a similar construction and it's a little bit behind, but it is a dad's sweater by Emily Curtis. I tested this pattern a few months ago for her in a very lovely rust color, which I love and I wear it all the time. And so I wanted to knit another one. This is in a blue colorway. I'm using yarn from Lollo Crea, which is an Italian small business, small company, women led, which I love. And they sent this yarn to me for free. And so I'm looking forward to pick this back up and finish it up. It's just taking a little break because of the test knitting, which I want to get done in time for the deadline, but it is lovely otherwise. Body is on hold on one of those barber cords, plastic tubes that I mentioned before, and I need to pick up the sleeves and knit the sleeves, and I need to fold down the collar. So yeah, I'm not gonna be talking about this at all, honestly, because not much progress has happened since my last episode. And I'm using, I don't know if you're interested in this, but I'm using Ikea's, oh, it says the name. I was like, I will never be able to guess the name of this Ikea item, but it says here, it's a, uh, do we want to pronounce this? Sure. Rizatorp, Rizatorp, Rizatorp. I'll put it on the screen. These are just Ikea metal mesh basket. I really like the look of them. I have a lot of Ikea stuff in my house. And this is one of my favorite things that I own. I have two. I have, no, actually I have two that I use for yarn things, which is mostly just when I have a project in progress, I'll just put it here and carry it around the house. But I also use these in like in the kitchen for like storing stuff. They kind of look good because they have the wooden handle and the white mesh, which I like. I mostly knit inside my house. When I go out and I want to bring some knitting, I would not use this outside. So if I wanted to bring this outside, I'll put it in a tote bag. But yeah, these are great for in the house knitting. Okay, friends, 
This brings us to the moment of truth. The moment where I admit that I frogged my oversized seasons cardigan by Ozetta. I'm kind of pretending to be ashamed because a lot of people had messaged me on Instagram where I, when I was showing pictures of the in progress garment saying, oh, that looks lovely. I'm so looking forward to Lena has the knitting time podcast here on YouTube. And she was one of the true fans of this in progress garment. And I'll show you the yarn. I don't have the in progress garment anymore because it has been frogged yesterday. But this was the yarn. This is Cascade 220 Superwash Edition. The color is beautiful. It's very dusty, lilac, grayish. And story goes that I went to Minneapolis for work and I saw Cascade 220. Whoa, this. It's very popular, I've seen it in lots of videos and reviews, everyone loves it. Oh, but this is the superwash version, uh, I'll take it anyway. And the feeling of knitting with superwash is not for me anymore. I'm sorry if I sound like a snobbish knitter. I mean, I, I do knit with acrylic, for example, so I guess I'm not super against the feeling of non-natural fibers on my hands while knitting, but I think the issue here was the combination between the superwash yarn and the stitch pattern that is in the cardigan. So the cardigan has a half fisherman's rib pattern, which looks beautiful, but it's also achieved via combination of knits and pearls. And actually the knits are on the stitch below the current one so it is a more complicated pattern than just like garter stitch so i think gather stitch would be definitely fine to knit with the superwash yarn for me for my taste however superwash which is very slippery with like a, a, some sort of stitch pattern i wasn't loving it it felt very slippery and it didn't feel enjoyable. The other reason why I wasn't loving the pattern actually doesn't have to do with the yarn, but it had to do with the construction of the cardigan. So the button band, it's knitted at the same time as the body. So typically for cardigans, what I've seen personally is that the instructions tell you to knit the body of the cardigan and then the sleeves and everything and after you're done you pick up stitches along the edges of the cardigan and then you knit the button band and i tried that and i don't love picking up stitches and so when i saw that the oversized seasons cardigan didn't require you to pick up stitches but actually it told you to knit the button band at the same time as the body i was like "Ooh, i like that no picking up stitches I think this will go much smoother, blah, blah, blah. The thing that I didn't love was that you do knit the body and the bottom band at the same time. However, the bottom band is knitted with a different size needles. So you don't actually use the same needle and the same cable for the entire project, but you have the button band on hold on double pointed needles, which are a few sizes smaller than the rest of the cardigan. So you would work on the body of the cardigan and then once you got to the bottom band you would have to switch needles and knit those stitches with double pointed needles and then you go back to your long cable circular needle for the rest of the body and again and again. So it was a little bit fiddly, not like massively uncomfortable to do but with this yarn I guess the yarn made it worse just overall the half fisherman rib pattern is more complicated and more slow going than just garter stitch or knit 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 and so for me it was moving quite slowly maybe because i have a million projects on the go but also because i don't have a lot of focused time that i can spend on knitting more convoluted stitch patterns because usually when I knit, I'm in the same room as my daughter or I need to pay attention to other things. So I would work on the half fisherman's rib 
cardigan only like in the evenings after my daughter went to bed or maybe sometimes during my lunch break at work but it was little time and so i didn't see progress fast enough for my likings and so yeah this is why it's now back to being just yarn and not a project and Erin from the Kurya Knits podcast was actually kind enough to try to motivate me. She was knitting at the time the Oversized Seasons Cardigan, which is now finished. Hers looks amazing. A very lovely brown color, like caramel color. And she was trying to motivate me a little bit. And we actually for a little bit did a um, non-official knit along, I think for a couple of days before I front this but it was nice to knit this with someone else at the same time and I apologize Erin for not following through and what I think I'll do with the six balls of this worsted weight yarn that I have is option A I think will be knitting a blanket so once I'm done with the bright red if this yarn is still in my stash waiting for me to do something with it, I think it'll become a blanket. As an alternative, I was also thinking about a Felix cardigan. I have the pattern in my Ravelry library, so I could use it finally. And it uses worsted weight yarn, and I think it could be a good option. I would have to purl because that's a traditional cardigan with knit, 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 and purl, 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 purl. So I'm not sure, maybe I can try swatching and see if I like the process of knitting stockinette. If I don't, it'll become a blanket. Boom. Color is lovely and I think it could be a good color for an accessory like a blanket. And just like that, we're done with actual knitting projects. And if you want to stick around, I'll show you some acquisitions. I think I have way more than usual, maybe not way more, but like more than usual. I don't know if that's because it's January and you want to do new things and you want fresh things in your life, not sure, just maybe a coincidence, but let's see what I bought. You've seen the drops green combination for the test knit, so, but in that same order, I also got a lovely fluffy combo which actually <laughs> looks quite similar to the yarn that I just showed you. For some reason when I bought this lilac purpley combination I had completely forgotten about the lilac oversized seasons cardigan and I think that's because I just didn't work on it at all almost. I think my mind blocked it from my memory and so I completely forgotten that I had some lilac muted shade in my stash. I guess it wasn't in my stash because it was in a project so I just didn't remember that I have it. So I, I bought kind of the same shade. It's not really because this is more vibrant and purpley and spring-like and it is Drops Kit Silk and Drops Air. The Drops Kit Silk is the same yarn I talked about before and it's mohair and silk and the Drops Air is actually a blown yarn so it's a very lightweight strand with lots of like space in the middle so it produces very lightweight garment very airy and like easy to wear i use it three times i made in the past a cardigan this is drops air plus a strand of drops alpaca silk it is peeling a little bit. I've not depeeled it ever, I think, since I knitted a year ago. Maybe I did depeel it once, but I use it in the house and so I'm not too concerned about the look of it, if it looks a little bit like worse for wear, but... And it's very, very lightweight because this yarn, the main yarn, the Drops Air, it is so lightweight. So. And if you're interested, this is the Novice Cardigan Chunky Edition by Petit Knit. So that one was a combination of Drops Air and a different strand, while this one is actually only Drops Air with nothing else. And again, it peels a little bit, 
mostly because I've not deep peeled it, but also because drops air, it is very soft. And so kind of the downside is that you'll have some peels. But yeah, this is so lightweight. Like it is really, really, it weighs nothing. So I'm excited to combine this two for the Claude sweater by Colibri by Joanna or oh, Joanna. Ooh, this is the first time I say her name out loud. Colibri by Joanna or Joanna, sorry. And that's a gutter stitch sweater pattern. It is knitted flat in pieces. So you knit a few gutter stitch pieces flat. So knit, 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 knit. Ooh. And then you sew them together. I don't love sewing things together. However, it allows me to get a lovely looking garter stitch pattern project without having to purl. And so I will take the sewing, I'll take the challenge of sewing these pieces together to make them into a sweater. And the color that I chose is very, 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 very inspired by the official pattern pictures that accompany the pattern itself, which Okay, two more acquisitions to show you. One is very, very exciting and very, very aspirational. I am planning to knit my first ever color work project. I don't know if it will be this one that I'm about to talk to you about, or if I'll do, actually I'll have to, I think, do a color work practice project or two, like a hat, a cowl, or something to practice with color work. However, the inspirational garment that I want to knit this year in color work is the porcelain porcelain sweater by Lene Home Samso, Lenit, which is a designer that I love. I also co-hosted a knit along all about her designs, but this one is so so stunning it is a drop shoulder collar work sweater and i will use this as my main color and the blue for the accents and the actual color work and the blue is actually the sunness garn tin silk mohair and sunness garn teen pear gint are the yarns that are recommended in the pattern so i wanted to go for the official ones since these are yarns that i can get my hands on and the blue is exactly the same blue the same colorway that is in the official pattern pictures the main color is not exactly the same so the store that i ordered this from which is a store that i love it's strict.it if you're located in Italy, I would definitely recommend to order from them. They have a lot of Sunnis Garn yarns. And so that store didn't have the official lighter color that is in, in the pattern pictures. And so I reached out to them on Instagram asking if this one would be a good color. And they actually were like, oh, I'll show you pictures. And so it was so lovely of them to send me picture proof that this would go well together. Well, the one that I got is 2321, which is a marzipan or marzipan. So I think my finished object will be a little less beigey and more like creamy color. I don't know if that's true, but anyway, I'm going for a very similar look as the one that is depicted in the pattern pictures, but I just kind of swapped the main color for something that I was able to find at the store that I ordered from. If you have recommendations on what's the best way for me to go about diving into color work projects, I would 100% appreciate that. I've never tried it before. I just really like the look of color work sweaters. I don't know if I love the experience, but having the yarn for a project that really excites me it kind of puts this as my kind of north star of like aspirational project and so i would love to practice first for then be able to knit this sweater i don't think i can jump into this pattern without any practicing my collar work i don't know what do you think i would love advice or ideas or 
a word of encouragement. And the last acquisition I have is the one that I was mentioning being like outside of my comfort zone a little bit because it's hand dyed yarn. Boom. I found these two skeins at my local yarn store. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm trying to hide myself from the camera to see if you'll be able to appreciate any of these shades, but I don't know. This is Hedgehog Fibers Sock Yarn. The colorway is opalite, opalite, opalite. I don't know. I plan to pair it with a mohair to make a sweater. I've been thoroughly inspired by Rebecca from the Crea Bea to make a lento. A lento is a sweater pattern that has a pretty open gauge, a very relaxed fabric, kind of like a see-through probably. And you can achieve a lot of sizes actually, I think, with just two skeins of finger weight yarn. And so I think it's a good project for you to try hand dyed yarn because it's more expensive than yarn that is not hand dyed. And so you can get away with two skeins and pairing with some mohair and you'll get a sweater out of it. For my size, I'm typically a small, I'm also fairly short, not very tall. And so I think with this amount, so this is 400 meters multiplied by two, so 800 meters. I think pairing with a mohair, I could actually get away with other patterns that have a tighter gauge. For example, the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs, which I have in my library and I made before, is knitted on uh, 18 stitches per 10 centimeter gauge, which should not give me that like loose, meshy of a fabric so i might do that instead of the lento the lento is 15 stitches per 10 centimeters so it's quite like open fabric i think i will just swatch in a few different gauges and see which one i like the best i'm actually looking forward to have a um, sweater that has a more open fabric than my usual ones so this one that i'm wearing the No Frills by Petit Knit has a gauge of 21 stitches per 10 centimeters. So it's quite like a dense fabric, like it's a regular fabric, I'd say. So if I go for the 18 stitches per 10 centimeters or 15 even stitches per 10 centimeters, the result that I'll have is a much lighter weight sweater and like a looser gauge. And I'm excited to use this kind of like spring-like colors and very pastel -y colors because I think the final object will be perfect for spring. So lighter weight fabric, spring-like pastel -y color, I think would be a match made in heaven, a perfect combination for a more lightweight sweater for spring. I wanted to actually go for a more muted color in terms of the mohair strand that I'll knit together with the hand dyed. So I wanted to go with something like this in the store and the owner was like, I cannot let you do that. So he was pulling out very bright colors, like closer to the bright blue here to pair with this. I'm like, oh my God, that's too much, too much color for me. And I was like, can we not do just this and mute down the fancy hand dyed and do this? And I think we kind of talked it through and we thought that a good compromise would be to go for a muted shade for the mohair, but something that was kind of more pastel-y and good for spring and a good match. So we went for this Rowan Kid Silk Haze in a mint color. Lots of purchases. That's it, my friends. Thank you for sticking around. That's it, friends. I'm happy that you joined me today. I don't know if you stuck around for the very end, but I appreciate you nonetheless. And I'll see you in my next episode. Have a lovely rest of your week. Bye.